Welcome to this week's episode of Debriefing Design. This week, we'll show you the process we take when we plan a full furnishing project. You may often hear the term FF&E in the design world, meaning furnishings, fixtures, and equipment. This includes everything from furnishings and decor, plumbing, appliances, and lighting. We'll take a look at the factors we considered in conjunction with the full renovation we designed for a retired client's two-bedroom townhome. This is Operation Hidden Peak. Our client had downsized in order to be closer to her children and grandchildren. The property she acquired was a spacious single-story two-bedroom townhome that had not been updated since it was built in the 90s. The ceiling had dramatic slopes and peaked at one end, making the 1400 square foot space feel much larger. For the renovation portion of our scope, we kept most of the space planning intact. We made minor tweaks in two key areas that allowed our client to use her space smarter. At the kitchen laundry connection, there were three doors that were on top of each other. The door from the garage into the laundry, the door from the laundry into the kitchen, and the pantry door. In addition, the laundry room barely had enough space for the separate washer and dryer and was not forgiving for larger appliances. Our proposed space plan solution was to eliminate the smaller end of the laundry room and to help our client save money by purchasing a unitized washer-dryer unit. This allowed us to include a mudroom bench and wall storage cabinet in the freed-up square footage. In lieu of the swing door from the laundry into the kitchen, we replaced it with a pocket door so there wouldn't be any more concerns of doors hitting each other. In the master bath, there was an oversized shallow garden tub with an attached small shower. We chose to go with a standard alcove tub in order to grow the size of the shower as this allowed us to create a half wall to divide the tub and shower and provide a hidden shampoo box inside the shower. At the vanity, we eliminated the space for a vanity stool and had custom cabinetry fabricated to match the existing door style and installed rollout trays so our client would not have to reach into the cabinet to find something. The engineered wood flooring was in great shape, so we left it intact but changed up the colors throughout to a neutral palette with hints of blues and grays. We painted over the existing maple cabinets with a fresh coat of gray paired up with river white granite countertops throughout. We wanted to accentuate the ceiling height of the living area and painted the walls a light shade of gray so the natural light would be amplified. In the two bedrooms, we picked two different tones of blue. In addition, we added lighting above and below the kitchen upper cabinets to help highlight the dramatic ceiling height. It also became great mood lighting when our client was not cooking. We also added three blown glass pendants over the kitchen bar area to bring even more lighting into the space. When we design a full furnishing package, we often start with the existing pieces in the client's inventory. For this project, our client had an existing dresser and nightstand set for the master bedroom, a piano that's been passed down in the family, a solid wood bookcase, and an antique baker's rack that we incorporated into the design. Because our client has a large family, entertaining was the most important function of the home. Cooking and dining was also high priority, so we made sure there was plenty of seating around the kitchen and breakfast areas. For the breakfast nook, we decided on a round table with a pedestal base as it would allow the largest number of people to dine together. Design tip. When choosing a round dining table, the right style base is very important. Choosing between a pedestal, cross leg, or post leg will ultimately determine the number of people that may be seated. For example, the table we specified was 48 inches in diameter. With a cross or post leg base, you are limited to four seats because the chairs would either fit between the crosses or on axis with knees riding on either side of the four posts. When we anticipate occasionally seating more than four, we specify a pedestal base so six chairs can be squeezed in when needed. We also order six dining chairs and place two extras in the two bedrooms as an occasional chair. Choosing the right material for seating is also incredibly important when it comes to entertaining. Because our client's grandchildren were all teens and older, we decided to go with a fabric upholstery that had Scotchgard protection. This allows the fabric to be easily cleaned off in rare instances where it gets stained. For families with younger children, we often specify indoor-outdoor fabric or even a leather or vinyl so that seating can be wiped off every day. If you're needing seating that will take a daily beating, going with an all-wood or metal chair may be your best solution. However, just keep in mind that a hard seating surface is not comfortable for long-term seating. Because furniture is the easiest way to change up one's style preferences, we often follow the rule of specifying larger pieces of furniture in neutral tones. This includes your bed, sofa, seating, and headboards. 
We like to bring in color and patterns using throw pillows, blankets, trays, area rugs, and drapery. These are all less expensive to swap out seasonally than the actual pieces of furniture. In the front bedroom, our client had asked us to create a dual purpose room as she still had an occasional use for an office. Instead of a full guest room setup, we chose to utilize a day bed with a trundle so she could still have room for guests to stay over but could enjoy reading and working the majority of the time. When choosing a day bed, we prefer ones that allow a full twin size mattress for a trundle. That way when the trundle is extended, it is the same footprint as a king size mattress. Did you know, there are guidelines to where you should place a piano in a home. Experts typically recommend putting a piano on an inside wall as it helps to protect the piano from direct sunlight and sudden changes in temperature. A piano should never be placed in front of a window or near air vents or fireplaces as high temperatures can affect it. For our client's living room, we redesigned the updated fireplace surround and extended it vertically to accentuate the ceiling height. Because the fireplace wall made the most sense in placing the TV, we incorporated cable box storage and space for a wall mount TV into the fireplace design. We also added some adjustable shelves for decor and accessories. The minimum distance we like to place seating away from a TV is 10 feet because having a TV over a fireplace usually means a higher mounting height, which can lead to neck pains from having to look up. To alleviate this, we often like designing a lower mantle that will allow for separation between the fireplace box and the TV. Make sure to check your manufacturer's recommendations on where to mount a TV over a fireplace as you can easily void the warranty and also mount the TV if you do not follow their guidelines. When it comes to choosing the right sectional, we often consider door openings, paths of travel, and elevator door heights. One of the worst things that can happen is when you have found the perfect piece of furniture, but then need to cut it in pieces to fit it through the doorway. In this instance, we selected a sectional that came in two parts that clipped together. For smaller spaces, a reversible sectional with an ottoman that can be moved is often the best solution as it would not limit how you can rearrange your furniture layout in the future. When placing living room furniture, we typically leave 36 inch wide paths of travel in multifamily and hospitality spaces. However, in a residence, we often shrink pathways down. If there is no one relying on mobility assistance devices in the home, 28 to 30 inch aisles are usually ample room to get through a space. Thanks for joining us this week on Debrief and Design. We hope you've enjoyed seeing how we transform our client's 90s townhouse into a calm and relaxing coastal inspired home that reminds our client of their time at the beach. Hopefully some of the strategies we use while specifying furnishings will be applicable the next time you decide to redecorate your home. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions or feedback about this project. Let us know what type of project you would like to see next. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for new episodes. Operation Hidden Peak, case closed.